If Dorothy Gale had decided to stay in Oz with her new friends, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, the Flying Monkeys, and the Munchkins, I don't think we would have all come to love and care about her story as much as we do. The Wizard of Oz resonates with so many people of all ages because it starts and ends with home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And I'm clicking my heels together. There's no place like home. Throughout her adventures, all Dorothy really wants to know is how she can get home. That's a longing every human being can understand. Augustine said it in this way, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. And in some of my favorite lines of poetry from the um, 19th century, William Wordsworth wrote, our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life's star, hath had elsewhere its setting and cometh from afar not in entire forgetfulness and not in utter nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. In some church traditions, funeral services are called homegoing services. I didn't know that, but I was in a class in seminary with a friend um, named Lee. Uh, he's an uh, American Baptist, and he came dressed up in a suit for class one day, and he said during our check-in that he was going to be leading a homegoing service later for a beloved parishioner. And I thought, well, maybe this is someone who is going home from the hospital or something. And then I realized Lee had tears in his eyes, and I thought, ah, oh, that man's going home. I want to talk about the home as sacred space this morning, not necessarily as a place that really exists, but as a place that we long for. Home as an idea, home as a spiritual desire, not just as a location where we dwell. Now, maybe you've lived all your life in one place, and your sense of home as both a dwelling place and a sacred space is fulfilled. That's a wonderful thing when it happens, and it's rare, because these days we're more and more transient than ever. And of course, there are huge portions of the human population who are deprived of the spiritual anchor of home by war, displacement, persecution, poverty. For too many people, basic shelter is an urgent problem, and it's not until that basic necessity is taken care of, that they can even become conscious of the spiritual need for home. Like Dorothy Gale, we go forth on the adventure of life, but no matter how exciting that journey, there's a child's voice within us that says, there's no place like home. Did you know that the word nostalgia originally meant severe homesickness? so severe that it was actually considered a legitimate disease, and I hope this will make you smile, this disease was considered best cured by time in the Alps. <laughs> but homesick for where? Sometimes nowhere in particular, just sick in the soul for home, for that place where the soul can thrive and the body can be safe and life can unfold simply and peacefully. Our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Home is a mystery, really. I think you probably all know someone, or many of you know someone, who were born in one place, and then they went someplace else, and they felt miraculously at home when they landed there, even though they may have never been there before. That may have happened to some of you. And they feel like, this is home. How weird. And sometimes they come into church, and they say, you know what? I walked in, and it felt like home. It's like there is a little homing pigeon in our hearts that's always flying around, always looking to land in just that right spot. Many of us knew or know or have homes that look beautiful and nicely furnished, but really aren't the right place for our hearts, aren't really home. I am such a person I grew up in a very nice house in New Canaan, Connecticut, a beautiful town, and I loved my woods and my yard. I loved our lilac tree that grew right outside the screened porch upstairs. It 
It was fragrant, and that fragrance wafted into the house on spring days. And we had everything we needed in my house. We had food and clothes and some fine rituals like grace at mealtimes, sometimes, okay, and special birthday traditions and brunches after church and visits from the tooth fairy and holiday rituals. Rituals and traditions are a very important way for, to create sacred space for children at home. I loved ours, and I'm grateful to my parents for teaching them to my siblings and me, because no matter what else was going on in my family, we did have those rituals to anchor us with a sense of the sacred. But there was a lot of craziness in my house. Unhappy parents, emotional violence, abuse, and addiction. Our house often did not feel like a home for me. I could not experience it that way a lot of the time. And I dragged my feet with dread some afternoons coming, off, coming up the walk from school at the end of the day. Never knew what I was going to find inside. When my father died when I was 17, and my, fa and my mother sold our house as I went off to college, I wouldn't have thought that I would miss my house very much. And I don't think I really did miss the house, actually. But you know, I dreamed about it constantly, and I still do dream about it a lot. I recognize now, though, that what my soul is looking for with that little homing pigeon inside me is still grieving, is not the house itself, but the home, the home that it represents. What I did not realize in my youth when mom sold our house was that I would become a girl without a home. Even though I was never without shelter and an address, I was really homeless for the next 16 or 17 years. During that time, I became very conscious of the wound of not having a home anywhere. And in an effort to heal my own hurt, I studied the, the idea and the archetype of home and began to understand home as a transcendent idea, much like God, hard to explain, something deeply felt and revered, and something that, when lost, can cause profound spiritual pain. I suffered for a long time with that disease, nostalgia. Recently, I saw a show based on Roald Dahl's book, Matilda. Some of you know it. About a brilliant little girl, a precocious little girl with special powers who has a terrible home life and parents who do not love or appreciate her. They think she's a good case for population control, as her mother says, who should watch more telly and stop reading so many books, and she is nothing if not a reader. Matilda goes off to school and finds a kindred spirit in her teacher, Miss Honey, who recognizes Matilda's brilliance and treats the little girl with great tenderness, protecting her from the sadistic headmistress, Miss Trunchbull. We learn that Miss Agatha Trunchbull is actually Miss Honey's aunt, who came to take care of her after her mother died when Miss Honey was a little girl. Miss Trunchbull abused the little girl terribly, murdered her father, and stole her house from her. She later served Miss Honey, her niece, with a bill for expenses incurred during her childhood, including charges for food, for rent. And she threatened to sue her if she did not pay in full. This is a great villainous character. In this way, Miss Honey was enslaved to her aunt and had to hand over all her teacher's pay every month to this monstrous woman. Miss Honey invites Matilda over for tea one afternoon, and Matilda is shocked to see that her beloved teacher actually lives in a farmer's shed at the edge of town. It's different in the movie, if that's the version you know. It's actually a tiny little shed that Miss Honey has made into her home. Matilda feels so sorry for Miss Honey, and she says so, and Miss Honey responds with this song that I'm going to sing. I want to share this song with you because when I first heard it, it ministered to me in a deep way. I had healed very much when I heard it from my, my nostalgia and had come to a, a place of knowing where home is in my heart. And I didn't realize that when I heard this song just how much that, 
that heart uh, was still tender. This is a song about what our souls need most in a home, which is not beautifully furnished rooms, not Martha Stewart perfection, but space for our souls to breathe free and safely and a place to dream at night. It's called My House, My House, but it is really about finding a sense of home.
wrote this to the congregation in Corinth about 2,000 years ago, give or take. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. We are all temporary residents in these earthly homes of bodies and buildings. May this awareness make us more tender with each other, supportive, and understanding all human beings as those who may be at any given time homesick children longing for safe shelter. So may it be. Please stand as you're able, and we'll sing together hymn number 163. 163, for the earth forever turning. were spoken in the whiz by Glinda the Good Witch, played by the amazing Lena Horn. Home is a place we all have to find, child. But it's not a place where we eat or sleep. Home is knowing, knowing your mind, knowing your heart, knowing your courage. If we know ourselves, then we're always home, anywhere. <laughs> 